it going everybody? Welcome back to Stacy Jiu Jitsu. Before we get started on the actual video, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that now and uh, hit the notification bell so that you get updated, so on and so forth. In this video today guys, we're going to be talking about how we actually blend Jiu Jitsu and yoga together. It's a wonderful combination if the, actual, the, the instructor actually does it correctly. But for those that don't know, in about a year or so, uh, Bianca and I are going to be opening up our own academy. And we're gonna be evolving yoga in our program as well and have a whole structure to it, programs. It'll be absolutely amazing. Today, instead of showing an entire structured sequence that works with a bunch of different things, we've actually chosen one jujitsu technique to focus on. And this way I can actually give you yoga poses specifically to basically develop a better range of motion, helping to further improve that technique as well as counter stretches to work with it as well. I'm gonna say something. And it's something maybe to think about, you know, give it some time. It might be a little bit confusing uh, just right now. So think about any technique that doesn't matter. It could be spider guard, it could be the Kimura, anything, the rear naked choke, any technique. If you look at a technique, you go, let's say you go below it. So one more level down, that makes a technique or details, the details that comprise the technique. Okay, so for now we go a little bit lower than that. So underneath details are concepts and or philosophies. And then below that are gonna be movements, movement patterns. What happens is that people will come in, and we're gonna pick spider guard today as an example. They will have poor range of motion in their hips. Whether they're sitting all day or whatnot, they have tight hips, a tight groin, a tight hamstring. So it limits their ability to make the, the full use out of that technique, which is the spider guard. So having that proper range of motion, having that proper uh, ac accessibility to, to far ranges, is gonna allow you to have more, uh, I would say, more of a dynamic game, and you can now apply it to many others. Many other techniques, doesn't really matter, as long as the movements are sound. Okay, so giving you three different yoga poses that will really help dig into the hips, get that extra range of motion, and also start to lengthen the hamstrings a bit. So I'm gonna get him to actually demo the pose. We're gonna see how well he gets into it. The first one we're starting with is sort of a supported version of what's called frog pose, which is why we also wanna be close to the wall because you wanna find any wall that you can get to. So let's get you scoot up against the wall. <laughs> scoot up against any wall, rotate yourself so at least your legs then are now up the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Go into a split stretch, you're gonna that. <laughs> Right away, like, right away, when I lay here, I feel it right in my groin, like, this band going all the way up. <laughs> the adductors into the groin area, but we don't want to just actually sit in the split stretch because that starts to focus more so on even just the hamstrings underneath the whole leg. Here you want to actually start to bend the knees, having them come a little bit closer towards you, and walk your feet as if you're trying to walk them a bit closer towards your butt. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So this, if you're really, really tight, this is a great place to start because your back is relaxed, you've got good posture, you know, you're not hunching in any way, but you're using the wall to help do the pushing, especially if you have no one with you to help push your legs for you. How's it feeling? <laughs> See, I'm pretty flexible. I mean, I am heavy, but I have pretty good range of motion, uh, but I could definitely imagine, like I could think of some guys that come to class, this would be like, I would say this would be amazing, a beautiful. Uh, it's, it's also a, like a lazy man stretch. Like I could just lay here and just let the wall do the work for me. It's actually pretty nice. To be That's exactly my point. I always say after Jiu Jitsu, you're probably exhausted, you're tired. Do I not tell you that every time? You're always exhausted and tired and you don't want to stretch. She tells me three times a day. This is when you're laying on your back. <laughs> what sort of, it doesn't take work. You lay on your back, you put your legs up the wall, get your stretch and you can be chatting and talking with people easy. And at least you're working on your body. <laughs> okay, so pose number two. This is, <laughs> this is the actual frog pose, not the supported version of the wall. So this is, especially if you have really tight adductors, great pose for it. So you're gonna come to a neutral tabletop position to start. This one's my favorite to watch her do, by the way. Don't say that. <laughs> so once you're in that neutral tabletop, get up, yeah. <laughs> start to widen the knees to a decent width to start. You don't wanna go too crazy, but you can always adjust bring the heels directly in line with the knees. If your knees won't let them go there, of course, do not force it. If you're feeling sharp pains, don't force it. <laughs> but if they can, drag those heels in line with the knees 
And then untuck the toes, because your toes are tucked. <laughs> and then you basically want your hips and your butt shooting backwards and down towards the mat. Yeah. In time, you can bring yourself down to the elbows, maybe prop something underneath the elbows if you still need to be lifted a bit. But you always want your hips shooting backwards and down, and not forwards. If you come forwards, defeat the stretch. Here, try to keep that pelvis tucked under a bit so you still have a nice flat back. And that way that keeps your posture really good still. There's no point in you know letting ourselves slouch. <laughs> yes, these poses sometimes look a little funny. You want to laugh during them, but too bad they're really good poses. Come onto your back and then bring your feet up into the air with the knees bent. I'm gonna be facing this way because you'll see in a minute why. <laughs> okay, so knees bent, you're gonna reach your arms into the air and try to grab a hold of the outside edges of the feet. Now, he's obviously decently flexible. <laughs> he can already grab the outside edges of the feet. If you couldn't, you can always grab the ankles, around the ankles, or even behind the knees on the thigh. From here, when you're grabbing the outside edges of the feet, you then want to start to pull them down so that way your knees are coming towards your underarms, towards the mat, and in time, you're stuck kicking. <laughs> in time, you're gonna start to widen the feet apart as well. And now he's feeling it, finally. Here, if this is a little bit difficult, I grabbed his belt to show you that you can always even use your belt, swing it around your feet, hang onto the belt and use that to help pull it down, especially if instead of grabbing your ankles or behind the, the knees on the thighs isn't enough pressure, that's where the belt comes into play and gives you a chance to actually pull it down. For posture purposes though, make sure the shoulder blades, if you can, keep them flat to the mat. Just work on using that arm strength to pull the feet down. Counter stretches. So I'm gonna show about, I think it is two counter stretches and that way, you know, when you're doing a lot of spider guard, even these yoga poses I just showed you, you're now going to maybe feel a little bit imbalanced in the body. It's kind of like when you do a lot of, say, like rounding of the back. You want to open that chest up, keep our body balanced, keep our body with good posture and that mobility that we need. Come lay down on your stomach and bring your hands just underneath the shoulders or more like right beside the, the ribs. <laughs> Untuck the toes, you always have your toes tucked out a little bit. I always tuck them because I feel like I gotta like, get up and go. You know, <laughs> no, like, you'll get usually your toes are on top. Pass someone's guard or something. So bring the hands a little bit more underneath the shoulders. Yes. So from here, you're gonna start to straighten up the arms and lift that chest away from the mat into an upward facing dog. So that's when the arms are basically fully straight. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. Yeah, you see how you just move them away? That's what we want. We don't wanna shrug them up, move them away from the ears. <laughs> Squeeze the shoulder blades together, which he already is. <laughs> and then you want to feel the chest puffing forwards as you take your gaze either forwards or a little bit towards the ceiling. Now, you also want to be squeezing the glutes here because by squeezing the glutes, you're protecting and activating this low back. Without that, you can start getting a lot of sharp pinches, sharp pains. To also avoid that, if you are feeling those sharp pinches and sharp pains and squeezing the glutes doesn't seem to help, Lower yourself back down to the elbows and going right into our sphinx pose instead. Keep the uh, forearms straight, hands up for it, yeah. Same cues though as before, squeezing the glutes so we still protect and activate that low back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and keep the shoulders away from the ears. That way we're gaining strength with the mobility because we're not trying to be contortionists. We don't need to completely like break our spines. We're just trying to get that range of motion, that mobility that we need to get through, you know, our everyday lives, keep our bodies in like that good physical shape. Going into our last counter stretch, because doing happy baby frog pose, we're basically bringing the knees towards us. We want to push them away and stretch the quads instead of the hamstrings. What a better pose? Low lunge. So coming out into a low lunge, bringing one foot forward, whatever foot you choose. <laughs> Perfect. Untucking the back toes again. <laughs> and start to drag that back leg further away from you just until you find a good enough stretch that you're feeling within the hip flexors and the quads. Yeah, I feel like it. Yeah. Always make sure that the knee is directly above the ankle. His is a little bit behind, so he needs to bring the ankle back. Yeah, as you lean that knee forward. It's perfect, holding right there. Try not to let pass. We do this because we want to protect the knee. And if you go past, you may be pulling a little too much. To ease it up, simply drag the back leg closer to you, Deepen it, push that back leg further away. To keep it a bit active, exactly what he's doing. Have your hands on the knees, pop that chest, and sink those hips. Now, if you need to make it a bit more passive, 
just as most people usually start with it by bringing your hands to the mat. And that way, you're just starting a little bit easier. You're not straining maybe the back as much if your back has been working all day. It's just a little bit lighter. Okay, so below in the description, we're gonna actually add another link to one of our older videos that deals with the rounded posture. So I know in the sport of jiu-jitsu, we get a lot of rounded posture, and if we don't correct that, that's gonna be taken to our everyday lives. So that video that we just linked below will give you uh, just like another handful of stretches, other things to do that will help actually open up the body and bring that balance back. Video is pretty much over now. I just wanted to share something with you guys, something pretty exciting for me and for Bianca, for both of us really. But it's been a dream I've always had since I was a white belt. I remember when I was a white belt, we had a seminar once uh, with two of the top competitors in the world, uh, Hapo Mendez and Guy Mendez, uh, five-time world champions, both sides really. Anyways, so ever since then I was like, man, it'd be really awesome if I ever had a seminar get offered to me or if I ever reach out and I get one. And recently it happened. I'm actually scheduled to have a seminar in uh, give or take, it really depends. We're kind of going back and forth right now. Give or take a month or two. We're scheduling in the day, we're scheduling the time, and I already have the topic. I'm gonna tell you guys a topic about it because I just I, I, I can't hold it in. <laughs> topic is gonna be about guard passing and uh, the philosophies of guard passing and how to apply your pressure and uh, how to put your weight down and transitions and combinations. I even want to bring in a whiteboard and actually uh, write things down so like, you can have a visual. Uh, a visual and like writing and everything so I'm just uh, I just wanted to tell you I've just been really really excited don't worry guys I will tell you all the information once I get it confirmed and if you're in the area please come by it'd be greatly appreciated I would love it I will be also doing a video Bianca will be doing sort of consider like a like a vlog of that day anyways thank you for watching I'll see you guys in the next video